So I just finished doing a little series on the basics of navigational markers. Your cardinal markers, your lateral markers, your special markers, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to take a little bit of a chart here. Now here's an extract out of a chart from a part of Queensland. And we're going to look how all the markers work together, how the boys direction can change and how lateral markers and special markers all come into it. So if you want to mate, learn how to put it all together, just check this out. Reading a chart is a vital skill all boat owners should know. So the good news is that most charts are really simple to read just as long as you understand the basics. Charts can be the old rollout form paper charts which are incredibly detailed or just the basic charts you get on your GPS unit. A beacon to beacon book type chart is even really good but there's also apps these days such as Navtronics. I use the Hummingbird Coastmaster Premium card for my GPS unit for my Hummingbird GPS and I find that to be a fantastic chart. I've got a series of very short videos on the main navigational beacons and markers and how to read them. So if you get a bit lost during this video, you can go back and refer to some of those videos. They're very short and they just give you a really quick rundown what all the navigational markers are all about and how to read them. I'm going to use a few snippets from some charts, but the main one is this one here, the Gold Coast Seaway. I chose this chart because it's got everything in it. It's very interesting. It's got changes in voyage direction, cardinal markers, lead lights. It's just a good example of a very busy seaway and how to read it. As we enter the Gold Coast Seaway, we have port and starboard lateral markers on each side of the seaway wall. We also notice there's a leading light. This dotted line shows the central channel, and this will be a very bright white light during the day, but lead lights are blue at night, and I'll cover lights in just a second. If we continue on the course of the lead lights, we'd run straight into a cardinal marker. And this is a great example of how cardinal markers are used where a special yellow marker or lateral marker just wouldn't do the same job. This is to mark a sandbar that needs to be avoided. So a special marker could have marked this out, but the eastern cardinal marker just makes it perfectly clear that the safe water lies to the east of this marker. So avoid the other side of it. Have a look at the voyage direction markers here as well. Each side of this cardinal marker has a boys direction marker that points in the opposite direction of each other. One's pointing south and the other one's pointing north. This is a great example of how boys direction works. The one pointing south is doing so because this is the start of the Nareng River. So if you headed this way, you'd be going upstream and therefore you'd be going into port. So the boys direction points that way. But if you turned the other way and you headed north, there's no river or anything like that. So it runs by the rules of the boys direction points to the nearest major port. And in this case, the nearest major port is Brisbane. So that's to the north. Now that we know the boys direction changes depending on whether we steer to the south or to the north, we can see a lot of special markers as well. Having a chart to work out exactly what's going on is vital. We see these ones here are marking the rock walls of Wavebreak Island. There's also a few here marking the shallow water near a very popular anchorage. And all of these ones here are marking the shallow water that's right next to a major channel. You can see how whenever you see a special marker, if you just have a look at your chart, you'll find out exactly what's going on there and what you need to do. This chart here is representing a very small piece of Pummerston Passage, which is to the north of Brisbane. And it shows there's three different channels. Because Pummerston Passage is not a river either, the voyage direction once again needs to point towards the nearest port. Once again, this is Brisbane, but now Brisbane is to the south of this location, so the voyage direction points south. You'll notice Dunlop's Gutter is a channel from a boat ramp that links up with the main channel, and it's also not a river, so the voyage direction here also points to the south. But Elumba Creek is treated like a river. Doesn't matter if it's a creek or a stream of any sort, if you go into that system and go upstream, then it's assumed that you're going into the port, therefore the voyage direction once again points upstream. So you can see that once you know the basic rules, even though all these different changes of voyage directions and stuff like that can seem a little bit confusing at first, the rules make it a lot easier to understand. You'll also notice a really common use for yellow special markers. Wherever two channels meet, a special marker will often mark this point. This is why they're often confused and wrongfully called cross-channel markers. While they can be cross-channel markers, 
they also represent a whole lot more than that. So my suggestion is whenever you see a special marker, just have a quick look on your chart and just see what's going on there. Now we're heading up towards my neck of the woods up in far north Queensland and you can see here is another example of how lead lights are work. This is a very narrow channel and I've travelled this on many occasions and the lateral markers are so far apart that the lead lights are a vital form of safety because you get a lot of weather up this part of, part of North Queensland, especially monsoonal rain and stuff like that, and you can't see the lateral markers, but the lead lights are so bright that even in heavy rain, as long as it's not too heavy, you can see that lead light work quite well. So I mentioned lights before. How do you navigate this stuff at night? The lights are also very simple to read, and the chart tells us what to expect from every beacon. Just be aware that not all beacons have lights on them, so if you're driving to a system late in the day, just have a look around and make sure you've got lights to get out. Having a look at the two lateral markers at the entrance of the seaway, we see that they are green and red, and there's like a cone indicating the colour of their light. The symbol next to them says FLG4S or FLR4S. Now the FL stands for flashing, the G and the R stands for either green or red, and the 4S means they will flash every 4 seconds. They'll look something like this. If we have a look at all the lateral markers in the main channel, we'll notice that the main channel has lateral markers flashing every 4 seconds, but the other channels that lead into the main channel, they have lateral markers that flash every 3 seconds, the cardinal marker is a little bit different. This one right in front of Waybreak Island that we discussed earlier just says Q and 3 in brackets and then 10S. Now, what that means is simply the Q means quick flashing and in brackets it says 3. Because it's an eastern cardinal marker, eastern cardinal markers flash 3 times. So it does this, the 10S means that it does this every 10 seconds. So this is what you can expect from this type of a cardinal marker. Now, if you didn't watch my video on cardinal markers, it discusses how cardinal markers lights work using the face of the clock to remember them. So have a quick look at that video if you're not too sure on how to read the lights on cardinal markers. With this in mind, you can soon work out all the other lights. The special markers on the rock, rock walls are both different. They will flash yellow, but one will do this every two and a half seconds, while the one on the other side will flash four times every 10 seconds. So this is what you can expect from this one. Now the only odd one out is the leading lights. Now leading lights are white during the day, but at night they're always blue. This is because they're marking the middle of the channel and central channel marker lights are always blue. You'll often see these on bridges more than anywhere else, but whenever you see a blue light on a bridge, it's marking the center of the channel for that particular waterway. But the front leading light has a symbol that says ISOBU4S, and that stands for ISO blue four seconds. ISO meaning that it has the same amount of dark time as it does light time. So an ISO blue four seconds means it'll be dark for two seconds and blue for two seconds making up that four seconds and it just continually flashes like that. But the back leading light has an FBU and F stands for fixed. So it's simply fixed blue light not flashing or anything. Look, this is a really quick video on a basic rundown on how to look at a chart and how to start reading it. There are some other lights and markers like safe water markers and things like that, but look, you hardly ever see these things. There's also lighthouses, and lighthouses come under a different sort of uh, set of rules and stuff like that. So if you have a lighthouse in your local area, just get to understand exactly what it's marking and how to read it. But use your charts and learn your local waterways and you'll be a lot safer on the water.